<clears throat> hey guys, welcome to Anderton's TV. I am Peter. How are you doing? Today I am here with Andy from Source Distribution. Hello. Hello. And we're going to talk about some Rode microphones because we have been using Rode microphones uh, for a while now. We use it for our voices up here. And we also use an NTR ribbon microphone here, which we uh, which we're very very happy with. So if you listen to any of of the uh, <clears throat> the videos that I've done on the top shelf guitars, those will be recorded with that and a 57. But welcome to Anderson's TV. Thank you very much. And uh, so basically, because we are <clears throat> recording a lot of guitars, I thought we should talk about or we would talk about sort of guitar recording. Um, acoustic guitars and electric guitars. We're probably going to do later. We're going to set some stuff up and change the microphones over so you can hear what it sounds like. Anyway, cool. what have you brought for us? Right. Well, what we've got today is kind of Rod have been around for for a number of years since kind of the early early nineties, mm. and there's kind of been a, a number of microphones starting off in studios, moving into broadcast. But over the last couple of years, Rode have kind of made a big statement about going back into the studio. Yeah. So we've just brought okay. a selection of studio microphones that uh, would be applicable for, for, for guitars, really. Yeah. And different flavours. I think that's 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 a, that's a really big thing that um, I tend to look at microphones as kind of being able to add colours to guitars. Yeah. So a condenser will essentially give us what we hear. Yeah. Um, Whereas a dynamic mic will kind of give us a, a, a punch, kind of why the 57 is ubiquitous yeah, exactly. with guitar That's, recording. It's such a popular microphone. Yeah. Um, and kind of kind of talk a little bit about blending microphones to give us kind of different tones. It's yeah. kind of it's 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 that thing of expecting one piece of equipment to do everything. Yeah, and sometimes that doesn't quite work. No. You've got to augment that with, with 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 other bits and pieces, you know. Yeah. So well, that's one of the reasons why we get so many guitar pedals as well. Ex well, as exactly. It's 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 we, the same we, thing. We're as, both guitar players. Yeah, it's the same um, thing with that pedal thing, isn't <laughs> it? Where you kind of you think like this is the last overdrive or color box I'm going to buy, and it isn't. It's yeah. a lie. We all know yeah. it's a lie. <laughs> and um, they all sound different, though. They all, they all sound different. different. Yeah. Anyway, so we're so not here to talk about that. We're okay. here to talk about microphones because we will be here all day. Exactly. So first up, we'll kind of we'll take a look at the Rhodes NT1. Yeah. So. The NT1 is kind of a step on from the original NT1A. Yeah. Um, the NT1A is around about 10 years old now, and that was the the ultimate project studio mic. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? Kind of 100 and Yeah, I know. Quid. Loads of people have got one of them. Hundreds of people use them on. Yeah. And the reason being that you, you put it in front of any source, whether it's vocals, guitars, drums, it's going to give you a, a, an honest recording, an yeah. honest representation of what, yeah. what's happening in the room. Yeah. Um, with the NT1, what they did, they kind of redesigned it. They didn't want to kind of undo the good work of the NT1A. No, no, no. But what they did is they kind of they, they, they took some of the hype out of the high end, so it's got a slightly smoother frequency response, oh. which which really lends itself to electric guitars. Yeah. Because what what we used to, what I used to find with the NT1A that it would be present, it'd be great for pop vocals, but as soon as you put it in front of a guitar it would just be a little bit too prominent, a bit too spiky. Yeah, yeah. Whereas that has kind of a much more, <clears throat> a much more kind of honest top end, doesn't poke out as much. So if you combine that with a dynamic mic, you, you kind of get this much more full, yeah, yeah. fuller spectrum of, yeah. of kind of uh, kind of idea of what the guitar is giving you. Yeah. So for, for kind of heavier electric stuff, um, where you want it kind of be, to kind of be hyper realized almost, you don't just want the natural sound. You want to make something that's larger than life. Yeah. Um, adding a condenser like that into the mix is yeah. it's, a, it's an old trick that I'm sure you use. A yeah, lot yeah, yeah. Lot. No, definitely use that a lot. You know, it's not something that we used here because we sort of, it's it's it, as as we talked about. You find that sort of sound that you want. You know, by using different mm. microphones, and you get to a point where you are happy with that and you yes. know that that's the tone you like yeah. and I sort of tend to stick with it that's why mm -hmm. I'm stuck with this for now but it's always interesting to get other uh, microphones into yeah. the mix and see what they can do for yeah. your tone you know for and it's and it's kind of it's, I think with with you guys cuz you're, you're are you using a, a Fender Deluxe most of the time yeah it's it's because it's that amp is kind of it's we all know a Fender tone it's yeah. very clean and it takes pedals really well mm -hmm. that's why we use it or that's why I kind of use mm. it a lot because it's very honest yeah you know and, and and it is a tone that people know like yeah. we talked about when you came the 57 that's why the 57 is so popular for yeah. for uh, for guitar because it's a it's a tone that people are familiar with mm -hmm. um, and that's why it's very popular you know yeah. and you it's know, kind of what it's, it's one of those things where you kind of speak to a lot of people about recording guitars yeah. and <sighs> 
they kind of say, well, you throw a 57 in front of in front of a cabinet. Well, it's kind of, if you just throw it in front of it, you, you yeah, you will get a guitar sound, but yeah. it might not ne necessarily be the right guitar no, sound. No, 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 but just setting it up alone is, yeah. is uh, you know, we, we've, you know, we always have the, the iPhone on with the lights in yeah. there and trying to find where the cone is and how, if you just move it a little bit back and forth. Mm. It's, 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 you know, it's a science to, to actually use a microphone and gain it up properly and, and maybe take the bottom end out of it yeah. or, you know, yeah. as, you, as you know. As I well. think that's a, that's a really important point though as well is kind of having the confidence to move the microphones and having kind of being bold enough to get, well, it's not right, I'm going to yeah. physically move the microphone rather than trying to fix it with the EQ. Or, yeah. And I suppose when you when you kind of blend mics together, yeah. so if you, you have your dynamic mic and then you augment that with a with a condenser or another flavor or, or ribbon or ribbon which, which is what we're doing here yeah. you, know? you kind of you that becomes your EQ in effect yeah. then you just kind of you, you kind of bring in um, kind of more of that openness or you kind of you went more or more kind of mid fullness, fullness. Yeah. yeah exactly so kind of using two microphones together yeah. is it's kind of obviously but you also have to, to remember to, to place them in the right place so they don't face each other out I've got, yeah. got a top tip for you actually because I use a ditto looper because sometimes when I'm here on my own mm -hmm. to record what I, what I when I do the videos I use a ditto looper and then I get a good sound and then I do a loop yeah and then I can go and place the microphones and then I can listen and I place the microphone and then you can go and listen to you get a good sound. Yeah. So that's top tip for any guitar players who is sitting alone that's <laughs> trying to mic it up. Yeah. Actually, it's actually a really good idea yeah. because you get a good tone, whether it's a, uh, an overdriven tone or, or whatever it is, mm. get a good tone out of the pedal, loop it into the amp and then fiddle around with the microphones. It's that's, you know. It's kind of almost that thing of when it just kind of comes into focus. It's that thing and it's and, it's, and you'll hear it, it, you'll hear it immediately when you go, oh, there it is. Yeah. You know, and it could be straight on the cone, but it could be that's a little bit to the left and a little bit out or yeah. a little bit in or whatever. And then you go, oh, that yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay, record, and then off you go, you know. It's kind of one of those things, I had a speech to a friend of mine who was a, was a, was a great engineer, and yeah. kind of, we were talking about the whole phase thing about, about drums and, and guitars. Yeah. And, <clears throat> Kind of not when you look at a mic, kind of don't just assume that the capsule is where the grill ends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind yeah, of yeah. Like, say, like, like you say, get get your iPhone um, torch out and really kind of look at the microphone, find yeah. out um, where the, where the capsule is, and kind of physically line the mics up. So yeah. it's great again for if you're doing it with snare drums or if you're doing it with the guitars. It's yeah. the same thing. Trying yeah. to get that um, to be the sound source to be in focus and kind of in phase. And yeah. Be a, be a, an additive element. Yeah. That's kind of that's that's the whole thing. So, but that's yeah. a good that's a good all all round microphone to have for somebody who's sort of starting out and if, you know yeah and if, you're, if you're reasonable price, isn't it? Absolutely. If you're kind of starting out, this this will work for drums. It'll work for bass guitar, acoustic guitar, vocals, mm -hmm. tambourine. It's kind of tambourine. It's multi purpose. Yeah, and well, that's great. So we we're, we're going to put some links below in the description so you can see uh, what the prices are on these mm -hmm. things. Uh, what else have you got for us? Right, we've got. Um, a pair of Some little ones. The M5, so kind of half inch pencil condensers. Yeah. Um, so like the uh, the NC1 uh, condenser microphone needs phantom power to power it. So yeah. from your interface or your converter, just hit that little plus 48 yeah. switch, yeah. and then that will power the microphone. Yeah. So kind of pencil converters, you'll s pencil converters, <laughs> pencil <laughs> microphones. We'll kind of generally see those. We'll see them a lot on hi hats. We'll see them on overheads. We'll see them yeah. uh, for classical recording. Yeah. Um, but acoustic also, guitars. No, acoustic guitars is probably the the, the, the big thing. Yeah. Because what you get is this really focused uh, impression of what the guitar is doing. Yeah. So you can really focus in on pick attack, kind of what the body resonance is. Yeah. The old classic thing of miking at, at the at the neck joint. Yeah. Um, but with the with the M5, they come as a stereo match pair. Yeah. So one of the one of the, the amazing things about Rode is. Um, their factory is based in Sydney, yeah, and it's not just their offices for admin and, and kind of the, the research and development. It's actually their man manufacturing facility. All right, heavily heavily automated, um, very very little labour, so it's not like a, a traditional production line where there's lots of people milling okay. around. And uh, this is all precision engineered. Yeah, um, the amount of investment is just is scary. Yeah, so there's a great video online that um, a friend of mine, Alex, did. Yeah, you can maybe put in the link below. Yeah, it yeah. Kind we'll, of gives you kind of a tour of the factory. It yeah. shows you the oh, processes cool. that they go through. Yeah, yeah. And it just so happens that they that Peter Friedman is into making microphones. He could quite easily be into making fine jewelry or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Medical grade equipment. Yeah. That's kind of what 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 they're using. Yeah. Um. So what you get with these two microphones is a match pair. Yeah. So you throw them up on a source, yeah. and they're matched within plus or minus one dB of each yeah. other oh, in terms cool. of sensitivity. Wow. So 
not only with these, but if you pick any two Rode microphones, put yeah. them up side by side, yeah. they're essentially matched. Yeah. Um, which is very, you don't see that from a lot of manufacturers, no. especially at the, the price that these yeah, that these are available yeah. for. Yeah. Um, so I would kind of urge you to check out that video. And yeah. it's the tour, it's frightening. It's almost like a kind of a Bond villain's lair, some of the stuff that's in there. <laughs> man. Um, the opera house in the background. Yeah, yeah. It's, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's nice to see a, a, a manufacturing uh, company like Rode but, that kind of has a heart and, and yeah, but actually, this, is the, do, this you know? is the great thing that people actually care about what they're doing. But I was watching mm. a video on the NTR microphone um, and how they make it and how actually it's like a science lab, wasn't it? It's, it's like, scary. Yeah, it's very scary. The people in yeah, wasn't they wearing masks and, and all, all of this the sort of stuff to make the little thing. And you can't get dust in there. And no, know. I mean all the processes that they go through there. Um, it's it's all precision engineered. Yeah, Nothing's yeah. left to chance. I mean, they they own all of the processes that they all all of the machinery okay. that they use. Yeah, so it's yeah. not like um, they're sub hiring it from someone or they're using someone else's it facility. To, yeah, they've got complete control over the tolerances. Yeah, of every single piece of equipment that, that kind of comes out of there. Yeah. so it's yeah, it's, it's frightening. It's something that you would expect to see from a from a microphone company that would be producing kind of two thousand, three thousand pound microphones, yeah. Yeah. not kind of microphones that are 150, 200 pounds. Yeah, exactly. So it's, yeah. yeah. It's, no, it's, the quality is immense for... for um, it's, yeah, it's, it's frightening. Yeah. Um, so with these M5 pencil condensers, you can use them in a stereo configuration, so you can have them as overheads, you can have yeah. them uh, on an acoustic guitar, which we'll kind of show later on, so you could either yeah. really, depending on the density of a mix, I suppose, whether you do yeah. one microphone or two. So yeah. if it was a solo acoustic guitar, you might yeah. do the stereo thing and kind yeah. of to emphasize the kind of yeah. the, the body and the bout of the guitar, and then kind of the thinner uh, noise from the, come from the neck, for example. Yeah. If it was a, a if it was a kind of a, a rock track, you might just have one microphone on there, yeah, yeah. on it hard left and right, yeah. and then you've got the kind of the big dancey American chorus yeah, yeah. happening, you know. Yeah. So. Again, these these microphones very very detailed in the high end, but you get good low range extension as well, yep. so you can use them on a number of sources. Yeah. But yeah. I think we've used them before in uh, in some of uh, Rob's videos as mm. well with the guitars done there. You know? Yeah. So again, kind of a multi purpose microphone, but kind of where this really shines is kind of acoustic guitars, overheads, that kind yeah. of thing. Anything that classical you... instruments, I can imagine, like cellos or cello. Yeah. <laughs> No, yeah. you know, you know. If, get, if, you, get, if you if you put it, if you if you get a good instrument, a good musician in a in a good sounding room, yeah, you should be able to get that on tape, yeah, or yeah. On, in, into the door. Honesty, exactly. <laughs> that's that's kind of that's kind of what we're going for with yeah. it. You'll if, if, with good mic placement, with a good musician, yeah. you'll get a good recording, yeah, and that's kind of the, the kind of hallmark of, of good microphones, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. Um, so those kind of the M fives and the and the NC one. Um, your traditional condenser microphone. Yeah. Now, that was pretty much the story of Rode up until kind of a year or so ago. Yeah. And they introduced this beastie. This guy. Yeah. I like this guy. So. <laughs> and it looks really cool. Like this new design with the black thing with the gold. Thing that yeah, so it's like all, all the finishes on these microphones are, they're ceramic. Yeah. So it's oh. kind of, it's, it's. They, it's kind of military grade finishes, so they don't scratch. You can't kind of wear, well, you actually can't wear the logo off because that's laser printed on. It's cool. kind of laser etched into it. Nice. So this kind of, they, they, they kind of go above and beyond what they, what they need to do. Yeah. It's kind of, it's, it's a fashion thing. Um, so the, the Rode NTR uh, is many, many years of kind of R&D to kind of bring a microphone that kind of is a, is a big departure for a, for a company that, that mainly makes condenser microphones. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, so the characteristics of a ribbon microphone are that they're, they're kind of they're warm, they're very smooth in the high end. Yeah. Um, so if you if you read a lot of kind of engineer and producer interviews, especially the guys that do a lot of rock bands, a lot of guitar bands, yeah, there'll generally be a ribbon microphone in the setup somewhere. somewhere exactly. Yeah. Whether that be on the drums or whether that be on the guitars. Yeah. And the reason being that if you kind of <clears throat> you put this in front of a guitar cabinet, it does kind of shave off some of the, the kind of the harsher elements. Yeah, um, no, definitely. So again, if we talk about combinations of microphones, you've yeah. got you've got a dynamic microphone which is really punchy and it's got that kind it of that take that, the top end. Yeah, it's got that kind of meat and that kind of detail. Yeah, and then you kind of augment that with something that's that's warm and it's got body and depth. Yeah, and suddenly you get a guitar sound that's kind of greater than the sum of its that's, parts. But that's that's why I use it here. You know, mm. that's why I use it for the top shelf stuff because it just it just just brings the sound out. So when mm. you when when you put it in the mix with with the 57, then it just goes pop, you know. Yeah. And then you can hear all of that bottom end. That's like when I played it to you earlier. Mm -hmm. It's just that just comes, you know. Whoop. Yeah. But it doesn't. It doesn't go. 
you know what I mean? It doesn't go all wobbly and all like like yeah. it just it just brings out that extra it's bit in control and it's music. Yeah, I think it, it's yeah. the, 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 it's a musical thing. The, isn't it? That's it. You yeah. kind of you put you when, when you kind of one of the impressions that people kind of get when they first use a room microphone. It does sound like music. It's, yeah. it's kind of it's it's kind of what you would expect to hear, but there's there's a there's a warmth to it. Yeah. And there's a there's uh, I don't know. It's kind of a it sits. When you kind of throw those faders up in yeah, yeah. a mix, it kind of sits there. It but as you saw, of... I didn't even EQ it. And yeah. there's not, I'm not, this is no word of a lie. I didn't put any EQ on on, on the latest Fender Stratocaster yeah. video I did. It was just those two. I had a little bit of a limit at the end of it. Okay. it. Again, you need, when you look at kind of a lot of producer interviews and they talk about very minimal EQ. Yeah. And I think it's, it's, it's that thing of a good sound source, good musician. Good positioning of the mic. Exactly. Good musician, yeah. And it should, it should be easy. It should be a case of just then final balancing. Yeah. If you're having to go in there with a lot of EQ, then yeah. it's, 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 it's possibly an, an issue with the source. It's an issue with the choice of microphone. It's yeah. an issue with the room. So it's kind of trying to sort those things at source yeah. kind of can, can make those, those kind of 30, 40 seconds spent in the room can save you half an hour of of, 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 playing, of, of editing and mixing yeah, and all that sort exactly. of stuff in the end. yeah but that's you know we you know it, mm. it, it, it recording stuff is is can be easy but it's not always easy yeah. you know because you can there's so many elements that can you know you have to have a good interface and you have to you know you have to have a good microphone and you have to have an amp you have some good fingers mm -hmm. we're, we're talking a lot of guitars <laughs> at the moment you know because we are doing a lot of guitar videos mm. uh, we will be doing more uh, of other videos so yeah. um, later on like we, we're probably going to try to do another video where we're going to record some vocal at some mm -hmm. point when we get when we get a moment that maybe Amazing. bring some other mic microphones yeah. in as well but, absolutely but we're very very happy with that microphone here I'll say I'll, I'll really oh that's amazing um, yeah. that's that, that's that's really great to hear. The, yeah. the, the, the interesting thing about this mic is it's an active ribbon. Yeah. So a lot of people, when they first start using ribbon mics or start reading about them, is that there's always the warnings about using a ribbon mic. Don't feed it phantom power, don't feed it after midnight, all that kind yeah. of thing. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, yeah. they, kind of, they have this reputation of being very diff difficult microphones. They to are work delicate. They're de yeah. like, oh, don't, they don't, you know. I mean, the, the th th thing is, it's like, don't, don't drop your ribbon microphone. Yeah. Don't drop anything. Don't. But they are. Don't, don't drop, drop any microphone. microphone. Exactly. Just. It's but they are. They are. They are a bit more delicate. <clears throat> you have to. You know. It's not. You can take them in and out. You don't have to put mm. them in a in. It's kind of goose down in at night. Yeah. All that stuff. <laughs> you know. We we are. We we got a couple of rooms here. We film in. And we do. They just sit on mm. the on the stands and we do move them about yeah. all the time. And then another amp and then over there and in here and mm -hmm. then sometimes it's sort of knock on the wall or whatever. And it does happen. You know. Yeah. And and we've had no issues with them. Uh, so well, what, if, what, what what they kind of what they wanted to do with this was just kind of to bring uh, bring out a ribbon mic that was kind of multi-purpose that you yeah. would use in a very similar fashion to a condenser. Yeah. So the way that they've done that is you've got uh, you've got the the ribbon motor which is kind of built in the factory yeah. on the road, and it's kind of it's suspension mounted within within the cage. Yeah, yeah. So if you kind of move the thing, you'll see that it's it's kind of if you can see that. <laughs> so you can see the ribbon element is, we'll is, some close -ups. is 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 suspended. So yeah. kind of it will it will kind of it will it will kind of be protected from knocks. Um, the mesh that that kind of surrounds it is kind of like a hexagonal pattern. So it's oh, really yeah, yeah. really super strong. So you can't actually yeah. crush that. It's got a little sort of a little lip in here, a little edge yeah. into it, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, that's it. The idea being is that they want it to be as acoustically transparent as possible. Yeah. The 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 the, the big change that they that they implemented with this that it's active. So this actually yeah. takes phantom power. Oh yeah. So yeah, yeah, a, a, a lot of the things you'll read is never feed, never feed a, a ribbon mic phantom power with this one. You feed it phantom power because it's got uh, a transformer in the bottom of it, which yeah. basically takes the sound source coming into the microphone. Yeah. It's a very low impedance um, audio path. So when it hits that transformer, yeah, the level gets stepped up, and it's got a nice high output from the, uh, yeah, from the yeah. microphone. That's definitely a high output. One, it? one of one of the one of the reasons. For, for, for that low impedance path is it retains from the high end yeah. so it doesn't roll off in the same way that a normal ribbon mic does so it's actually there's more detail in this than a traditional yeah. ribbon mic yeah. um, and like I say you've got a lot more output from this so yeah. you can use it with very inexpensive uh, interfaces yeah. so if you're using a kind of an old school ribbon mic you kind of really have to crank the gain with it yeah. the issue with that is you introduce a lot of noise yeah. whereas with this you can kind of keep the gain at a sensible level yeah. and you're getting the most direct sound on, into your door as possible. Yeah, yeah. So kind of, in terms of being a multi-purpose microphone, you can use this on guitars, vocals, drums. Great on kick drums, by the way. If you Is kind it? of, if you kind of, if, as long as you don't get the blast 
yeah, from yeah, the yeah. Drum, if you kind of just I haven't kind of tried that yet. angle it away from 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 the um, from the sound hole yeah. kick. It sound it sounds awesome. You've got a lot of kind of natural low end in there. Um, so just a very accessible, very easy microphone to deal with. Fantastic. Um, yeah. yeah, well done. Again, to check the them out, and uh, links will be below. I think it's about what is it about five six, five four nine. Yeah. So for which is which is for a ribbon microphone, it's it's really affordable. It is. You know, because you know ribbon microphones, they are above thousand pounds. Yeah. I, well, the ones that I've looked Definitely. at in the past. Anyway. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and, and again, it, because you've got such tight tolerances with the manufacturing, if you buy one, um, if you buy one now and then purchase one six months down the line, yeah. they're going to sound exactly the same. So you can use yeah. those as a pair of overheads. You can yeah. use them as a set of room mics. That's you can great. use them as a pair. So yeah. very, very cool. cool indeed. So what I think we need to do is now is to plug them in and have yeah, a listen. I think absolutely. we need to do the acoustic guitar first and then use the M5s mm -hmm. maybe. Maybe put them... We've got this little... Uh, we've got this little attachment thing as well. We use that and maybe set them up and point them in on the guitar and then we'll do the uh, ribbon and then we'll do the uh, the NT1 as well. And, see, and then we'll sort of, we'll just record a little bit and maybe just have a listen to the difference and then come back. Let's do it. Okay guys, so we are back now and uh, I went into the store and I picked up this Martin D18, which is lovely, <laughs> which we like very much. So we've got the NT1. NT1, yeah. NT1, and um, so at the moment it's kind of positioned um, on the kind of just above the sound hole, right? Yeah, I mean, you'll generally see that as a starting point for, yeah. for a lot of people kind of go to that because you get a nice balance between um, kind of the sound of the fingers or sound of the pick yeah. and then kind of the more kind of articulate sound that comes from around the 12th fret. I'm trying to get a, a thin pick out as well. So, mm. so I'm just going to try just to strum some stuff, uh, see what that sounds like. Maybe we can move the microphone on our start and then we'll move the microphone mm -hmm. around. So yeah. here we go. Okay, so uh, that's kind of how that sounds like, just above the sound hole. So I can actually move the guitar, can yeah. I? Yeah. If it's probably easier. Yeah. So if I sort of, if I try to move the guitar to the sound hole, then we'll see what happens there. So that, that's that's what that does. So there's a lot of, you know, we don't have to sort of move things around a lot, but you can sort of get the sense that yeah. what the microphone sounds like, one, yeah. and two, when you change position of a microphone, how much it changes. If I just sort of do a G chord, and then I'll try to just... I don't know if you can hear that, but you know, I'm moving the guitar closer and, and side to side, and you can definitely Again, tell. Again, it makes a huge difference. I mean, it's that, it's that old thing of kind of setting up your recording chain and putting yeah. a pair of headphones on, and then just moving around, finding a point. Not only in not in not only in the relationship between the microphone and the guitar, but the microphone and, and what the room's given you. Yeah, yeah. So you'll find different points where the guitar will be in phase with the room or out of phase. Yeah. So it's kind of it's, it's good to kind of work out where it works best. But yeah. In this position, kind of everything's. Yeah. Also, yeah, what you what, also what you play if you want to do some finger style stuff. Yeah. You know, if you if I'm if I'm. And if I move the guitar to further to the sound hole. Again, and yeah, you can probably hear that, you know. Yeah, and it's just kind of like I say, just moving that microphone, kind of being confident to, to, to kind of experiment and take that time. Yeah, it does make a huge, huge, make a huge difference. Yeah. This is just a little experiment now. You know, we can, we'll probably, hopefully, at some point, we can do like a, pro, a video where you actually we cut in all the different microphones mm -hmm. and then just we'll, we'll we can maybe do a whole. I'm not. I'm just going on now. Just doing all the microphones and just play the same thing and then blend them into each other and see what happens. Yeah. You know, at some point, you know. But that's that's. Uh, We'll, we'll try to do that in the future. Um, let's shall we buy the uh, by the magic of of uh, editing snap our fingers and then get some other microphones on there. Yeah, there we are. Oh, look at that. There they are. Ooh, so what is this then? So these are the uh, M5. <clears throat> so these are the M5s yeah. with the, the stereo bar. So all okay. the stereo bar allows you to do is 
uh, obviously you have two microphones on one stand yeah. and also kind of set up accurately uh, a space pair yeah. Uh, so at the extremes of this stereo bar, you've got them kind of. You got the centimeters on here, much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you can set up X Y patterns and kind of various. Different I'm going to do a little quick uh, zoom in on this because you get 90 degrees, 110 degrees. You got the centimeters here on each side, so you can pro so you can use it to to propagate that. You know, wherever you need exactly. To set, so, set so again, it's, it's kind of it's making sure that the, the, the stereo stage that you create is yeah. accurate and will kind of yeah. make sense when you come to pan that cool. in, uh, in the door. Cool. All right. Let's uh, let me. Talk. I'll just play the same thing. Yeah. It's a little sort of. Uh, um, I've got this uh, thing about the new Brian Adams album at the moment. Plug. I, I really enjoy that. You see, it's called Get Up. And, oh, okay. And yeah. He plays like three acoustic songs at the end of it of 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 the songs that are on the album, and he just he's got something there. And it, actually, if you listen to that, that is that sounds super great. You know. Yeah. And I don't know what they recorded with, but but the, it's just him and an acoustic guitar. And it just sounds like it's brilliant, you know. It's my, the, if you kind of go back years and years, that unplugged record they did for MTV. Yeah, that's mega. Yeah, as well. But like, all of that stuff, you know, that's uh, once you get it right, it really does sound. Yeah. Good. He is also he also has got you know he's got the mm, he's got that, hasn't he? Groove, anyway, Groove from Vancouver, <laughs> baby, isn't it? <laughs> I like him a lot, but I don't, hang on, care, I don't care how anyone said Brian Adams is oh, yeah. cool. <laughs> okay, so this is an exclusive, guys. We really like Brian Adams. Okay, but that's okay. We we this is uh, we can say that even on TV on YouTube, which probably just comments below. Just yeah, comments below. <laughs> Brian Adams, Brian Adams. Anyway, now anyway, moving on. I'm gonna leave all this in. <laughs> Good. So. Let's have a listen. So uh, again, the same guitar, and I'll play the same chords. And one uh, mic is pointing at the sound hole. The other one is pointing at the 12th fret. Yeah, let's do it. That's a great chord, isn't it? Uh, Jeff Lynn wrote that song, I think, with Brian Adams, yeah. and you can definitely hear Jeff Lynn in there, isn't it? It's linified. That bit. Anyway, so so uh, let me try to do some just some picking like before. Um, So you know you can hear you can probably if you can flash back and forth between the two on YouTube. Yeah, so but hopefully if this comes across, you should be yeah. kind of getting <clears throat> kind of a realistic picture of kind of what the fingers do and kind yeah. of that and the kind of the string noise and kind of the detail of whether it's uh, what type of pick it is, all those kind of things. Yeah, so that's that's I, I'm using, I was using a nylon, a thin, it's an 88 mil nylon pick, and of course picks, as we've talked about before. Uh, the reason why there is so many different picks, uh, Jim Dunlop makes so mm. many different picks, is just because different picks gives a different tone on on your guitar, acoustic guitar, Absolutely. especially. Yeah, I mean, especially uh, with those nylons, it almost yeah. becomes like a like a percussive element. It's like like if you have that in a big chorus, it's almost like adding a shaker. Yeah, sometimes it yeah. kind of it makes it makes a hell of a difference. Yeah, yeah, picks are. It, it, that's one of the things you know when I do um, sessions. I, when I go out, sometimes I only take one or two guitars, acoustic guitars, but I'll take, mm. you know, like 20 different picks. Yeah. Because whether it's Tortex or Nylon or yeah. Altex or it's a thin thin one or thick one or or, or it's a sharp thing or yeah. if it's around, sometimes, you know, when now we're starting to talk about picks as well, but it is it is a big it, thing. But if you round, if you do the round end of the pick, if you if you play with that, it gives a different attack, you know. It's it's huge. I mean, kind of it, all, all these little elements kind of, do make a, a huge difference to the end result and recording. It, does. it kind does. of it's everything in that chain. Yeah, kind of starting with the pick. But it, <laughs> well, it, you know, it does. It, it yeah. does. You know, of course, a nice guitar is not to. Yeah. You know, I did because I've I'm I do like the Martin guitars for recordings and mm. they they just have a good sound when you record them. Yeah. That's why I picked this one today because I know what that will sound like mm -hmm. on because I've got Martin guitars which I use myself. Um, when I do the sessions, and I know that they sound, they record really well. Mm -hmm. So that's why I picked this one today because I know what it'll record like. You know? Yeah. Um, so I didn't bring my own in. But. Like I say, it's kind of if you kind of you knowing the instrument, you knowing kind of what 
what frequencies it's going to produce, whether it's going to be kind of like not extreme low ends with that, it's going to be a nice kind of focused low end, yeah. and you've got that detail. Yeah. Kind of having these pencil mics, you can kind of really focus in on that. Yeah. It's not like kind of taking a big snapshot of, of, of the whole instrument with one microphone, you kind of use it to, to kind of zero in on the elements that you exactly. want. Exactly. But it is also, out. you know, you'd also probably in a studio <clears throat> situation, you probably have somebody who's kind of would move them around while somebody else is, is listening in yeah. on the, uh, you know, we spend a little bit of time yeah. setting it up as well, but you would, you know, you would, you would get it really fine and then you would try not to move when you do your, yeah, and you, you know, you sit completely still. <laughs> You know, on, on, on there. Anyway, um, hope hope that came through, uh, came across good on the... Uh, well, of course it will. Sounds great. Pete's so, playing, isn't it? So, <laughs> obviously going to be all right. Cool. Let's, uh, let's, again, by the power, the magical power of uh, Final Cut Pro, let's, uh, let's put some other microphones up. Very... And there we are. Now we've got the NTR microphone right here in front of me. Now, <clears throat> it wasn't that magical, was it? Because we did spend a little bit of time positioning the the microphone correctly. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, with with a ribbon, what it what they tend to benefit from, because one thing which we didn't mention earlier is uh, the other two microphones that we've got were cardioid yep. polar patterns. So essentially, they whatever you point the mic at, yeah. it will pick up yeah. in that kind of that kind of yeah. circular yeah. motion there. Uh, with a figure of eight microphone, like a ribbon microphone, so we've got a pickup pattern which picks up in front but also behind. So what the what a ribbon generally benefits from is a little bit of space yeah. between the recording source. Yeah. Um, so what we've done, we've kind of moved it back a little bit. Um, yeah. And again, just because it's going to be slightly darker than these condensers, yeah. just kind of focused it in a little bit more to the to the kind of away neck. away from the sound. Exactly. Hole. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so trying trying to remove some of that boominess that you get from from kind of micing the body of the guitar. Yeah. Um, but we should still get some of that pick attack. We should still get some of the, yeah. you know, the dancey stuff on the. In the also, re also remember, you know, people, you could mix. Them in, you could, you know, yeah. You I mean, that, it again, in that's that's the there, thing. It's so. kind of with with these kind of microphones that do add flavour. You kind of just yeah. that you kind of just touch in, you nudge in a little bit of warmth. Yeah. And maybe you have a, another microphone as as the main, the yeah. main element. Another thing that you could do with something like this is have it kind of where the guitar yeah, you is. That, yeah. yeah. So you yeah. Sort of kind of if you're ever struggling with, with to try and get an acoustic sound, or if you've got a difficult guitarist. They kind of say, well, that's not the sound that's <laughs> in my no head. There's no such thing <laughs> as a difficult guitarist. There is. Definitely is. <laughs> um, what you can do to kind of, to, to kind of appease them slightly is just take yeah. the microphone above, yeah. above the shoulder so it's kind, of, it's, what they're, it's kind of what they're hearing. Yeah. So you can kind of blend that in. So there's, yeah, there's loads of... Of course, of because that, play as, as, that's, actually, that's really, that's really interesting, actually, because you put... This is what you're hearing here, isn't mm. it? When you play your guitar, you actually hear... You don't hear what's, what's here. You yeah. hear here. It's, because it's, it is there, of course. But so having a mic up there, then you actually yeah. It's, uh, it's like that thing with, with kind of brum, where, where drummers kind of bore you to tears in the pub, where they talk about oh, snare drum sounds great, man. Yeah. They're, they're hearing it from here, where yeah. you hear it out, out there in, and front, like, in front, and it's and your eyes are blank. Going yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of it's all about that perspective, and I suppose if you want to recreate that, then you you stick the mic where. See, where top tip are. for you. Another top tip for you in this video. There we go. Follow anyway, on. let's hear it. I'll play my uh, my uh, lovely chords again. So uh, let's see if I can come by. Come by. All right, here we go. Got the pig again. Still the same pick. Still the same guitar. Everything. Here we go. Nice chord, isn't it? It's, I'm really into those chords. Anyway, so um, let me do a little bit of, of picking again. So there we go. So that's uh, again. Forward, back and forth, listen between the three, but that's kind of the flavour that this microphone gives you. And that's it. I think it's it's kind of the I would say the, the other the other mics are, are much more natural. It's kind of what you'd expect to hear if you're sat in the room. Whereas yeah. the, the NTR or any rhythm mic is it, definitely a flavour thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, experiment and blend and experiment and blend. Definitely. So there we have it. These are the the Rode microphones. 
links are below in the description and if you want to hear what they sound like on the electric guitars then of course we use them on on all of our videos and um, so you pop over to Top Shelf Guitars where there's no talk where it's just <laughs> the playing you know because and then just have a listen and see because there's there's the the road the NTR is always uh, a part of, of mm. that um, the newer what the newer videos anyway so if just go back and listen to some for the last couple of weeks um, and then you hear what it sounds like there it sounds amazeballs I think I can say that I don't think it's on the fingers of it, finger sort of thing, yeah. <laughs> anyway guys there you have it thank you very much for watching and um, thank you you're Andy welcome. for coming in, and um, we will see you soon here on Anderson's TV.